All right. Hello, everybody, and this is uh, Everything Horror Podcast. This is the season premiere of season two with your favorite host, Paul Dosky, and co-host. Tessa Baker. And um, we have very special, awesome people today, and uh, especially the voices inside each and one of our heads, or if not all of them. Uh, Anyway, uh, Tessa, would you like to say who we're interviewing today? Um, we are entering Dan... Co- is it Coughlin? Is it Coughlin? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Coughlin, New York Alright, because, and, uh, just a quick question. You Are you guys brothers, as out of curiosity? Because we noticed your guys' last names are the same. Well, we might I identify as, as, as like, Ryan's your sister. last name is so cool that I want to be your friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's a coincidence. Posts, then we realized that we were actually blood brothers. That's awesome. <laughs> that is amazing. All right. So anyway, Tessa, please introduce who um, we have. We have Dan and Ryan Coughlin, who are our writers from Ditch Day. Ditch Day the movie. I don't know if it's Ditch Day or Ditch Day Matt and we, because I've seen it written both And around. we also have Megan Waters, the producer, with us as well. So welcome, Hello. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Thanks for having us. You are Thank very, you very welcome. Oh, you are very welcome, and I'm so glad that we can actually finally do this after all the postpone, postpone that we had to do, but family comes first, in my opinion. So, yeah. very, very cool. Yeah, and um, I just hope things have gotten a little bit better. It's not like it's my business, but I just wanted to throw it out there that I hope everything is working out for working the best. Out better. But, uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're very no, welcome. No, you're very welcome. Um, so, the first question we got, what I had uh, to ask you guys was, um, what was the budget of the film that you guys were allowed to uh, work with? To make the film, seven hundred million dollars. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll field that, that question. That's a mega question. <laughs> so it's um it's a passion project. Um, it started as a passion project and uh, it continued to be one. So we we were working with really really limited funds. Um, but what we did have is uh, a big wealth of hearts that were really into the film, into the script, and the project. And so we're probably the definition of micro budget, and that's what we'll that's what we'll go with. Fair enough. Sold like a producer. <laughs> <laughs> well she sold it well. <laughs> we, you know, the picture had so much um, given to it in terms of resources, locations, effects, time, like. Yeah, it's uh, it was. Uh, I say it's, it's priceless. That's the budget. It was priceless. Alrighty, well that always works too. Yeah. It's worth its weight in blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's blood. great. That's awesome. Perfect response. That is awesome. Okay. Um. I. My question. Is, one of my questions is, how did you guys come up with the concept for this movie? Take that, Dan. Do you want to take that? Well, I, this, is, this is Ryan. Yes, go, Dan. Oh, hi, this is Dan. And uh, <laughs> Ryan is, we're actually the voices in each other's head. And, and we have the same mother, and we hate the same father. But I'm uh, uh, No, we, we, <laughs> we kind of just grew up uh, in the video store, you know, the mom and pop video store days. We're from a very small town in Wisconsin. We just, we really liked all the old school horror movies, like the Dario Argento stuff. And then um, we wanted to write a movie in the vein of like the Roger Corman, um, the, the Massacre series that he had, like Slumber Party Massacre and Sorority House Massacre and its sequels. So it's, it's, it's in tribute to that, but, you know, we're a little, we have our own little style and our own little quirk, so we wanted to put that into our movie. And uh, Megan is a very cool producer in that she's her passion and her creativity is in business, and she's very good at it. So she's the kind of person that works well with artists. We had known each other from another TV uh, uh, TV series that she worked on as a producer, and I worked as a camera operator. And then when Ryan and I finished the script, we got it to her, and we pulled our resources. 
and Ditch is what you got, and we're all very proud of it. And I think it uh, struck the chord of the Roger Corman crowd, which makes Ryan and I very, very happy. Yeah, and we, we kind of want to set up to do a you know, big tribute to that, that brand of horror, add a, a good product that might be sold, and uh, spin it into a little bit more of the, the thinking gore and um, some, uh, you know, interest some, uh, some real life stuff to a, you know, a monster in the house movie format. Uh, this, this is what came out. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so we're going to take stop, uh, take a pause on the question for a minute to let you guys introduce yourself for people who possibly don't know who we you guys are. But um, Dan, if you would like to go first, just uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. So that way pe- people listening can have a better understanding of you and the voices in your head. <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't know that they want a better understanding, but but damn it, I'm going to give it to them. All right. Um, no, my name is Daniel P. Coughlin. Uh, I've always been into this stuff. Mom stuck me in uh, in therapy at a young age, and I just I love dark stories. I swear to God, I'm not a I'm not a fruit shake that you know of. And um, <laughs> well, then, no, uh, I, I, you you I must like scary stories to tell in the dark, then, right? I do, I do. All to, right. To me, the voices in my head, and anybody else that will listen. But um, yeah, I grew up in in a small town in Wisconsin. I've been writing since a very young age, all horror. Uh, I escaped that small town by joining the Marines in 1997. After that, I stayed in California because it's awesome. And if you want to get into the horror movie business, you stay in California, or your odds are better if you stay there. So I went to Cal State Long Beach, and I graduated while there. I interned for Wes Craven, which was awesome to get to know that guy because he he's one of my favorite directors. Yes, that sucks so bad. Yes, it does. But um, <laughs> yes, he's he was an awesome dude. Made amazing horror movies. The guy was a genius. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about him. He was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, he inspired me. I, I was like an intern on the Hills Have Eyes remake. So I got to great sit movie. in Wes's office and, like, read all these great horror scripts that he had laying around and stuff. And that kind of helped me develop, along with school, uh, a script, which I wrote called Lake Dead. So then I sold that, and I got a three-picture deal out of that one with Alliance Group Entertainment. And then uh, they also produced Farmhouse and they bought Lake Dead too, but that is on a shelf, and I don't believe it will ever get made. And then in addition to that, I wrote uh, six novels that are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or whatever. And uh, I have a brother who is also a partner in crime and a lover of horror. He's on the other line. His name's Ryan. And uh, I'm here for you. I love you, man. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, along this journey, I've worked with Megan for like 12 years too. Longer than that, probably 15. But um, yeah, cool. but that's that's Very that's cool. it in a nutshell. Ryan, you want to go? Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll make my nutshell smaller. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I I grew up in um, in the same bedroom as Dan, and uh, uh, we, we were always extremely tight. And uh, we, we, it was funny because we would go in our own little space, our own little world, to do our own writing. And um, we never even talked about what we were doing. So it was years later when we both found out that we were both uh, writing our own little uh, crazy stories. And um, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of a, a journeyman when it comes to genre, but I, I deeply love horror, and it's a fun space. And I'll, I'll hopefully swim in it for you know as long as I'm swimming. Um, uh, I actually stayed in Wisconsin for college and I, I went to school for finance, economics, and film because the, uh, the, the goal was always to get out to LA and, and participate in the movie industry. Um, cause I, I love it. There's just no better mix of science and art in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I try to participate in, uh, in a few different ways and, and writing has, has always been a constant 
Um, but I have that kind of right left brain thing going, which is a curse. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in the business side as well. Um, that's where, you know, the finance and economic side kind of lend itself because it is a business and it's good to understand that side, but also love, love the acting side. Um, not as a lifelong devotion. I'm not as noble as the real actors that get out there and do it, but I have a lot of fun on the other side of the screen. You may recognize me from the, from the, award-winning picture lake dead as the guy in the orange <laughs> sweatshirt at the very end that says this place is fucking awesome Ooh, you know <laughs> and has his head chopped off. You don't see that but that's me um and uh actually uh i now live in san diego with with my wife and uh two two little boys um, congratulations but, uh, love movies love writing i do have uh, a couple of novels one one that's published one that's um going to be published this year and just keep cranking that's uh that's that's me in a nutshell. Wow. Yeah. That was a longer yeah. nutshell than mine, and you said it was going to be short. <laughs> no, mine was short. I have a smaller nut than you, Dan. Wow. I don't know if that's a good one or not. Mine hangs lower, though. <laughs> it's more compact. And on that note, Megan, tell us who you yes. are. <laughs> so I'm Megan Waters. I hail from the great white north of Canada, and uh, I did a four-year degree in radio and television arts at Ryerson University. A shout-out to my Rye High fans and, and fellows. And um, I got the opportunity to move south um, in 2005 to sunny California producing car shows for um, uh, a production company. And um, who was owned? It was owned by uh, Dan Woods, who is the uh, he was a lead actor on Degrassi Junior High, which was like a big show in, in Canada when I was growing up. So it was kind of it was kind of cool. And I uh, was with the production, and that's where I met Dan, and uh, we kind of hit it off. And I've always loved production. I'm, I'm definitely I like to be behind the camera, and I have just an extreme passion for creating and telling a story. And um, you know, Dan and I, for many years, he would say, hey, you got to produce something of mine, you got to produce something of mine, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I'm doing this reality TV thing, and I, uh, you know, he handed me Ditch to read when it was done, I said, okay, fine, I'll read it, and I read it, and I literally had one of those moments of, oh my God, inside of Starbucks, like, I just kind of shouted out, and people looked at me like I was crazy, and I'm like, okay, I got to make this. So that's, You were like Meg that's, Ryan. It's been a fun journey. Um a lot a long ride but a fun journey and learned so much and I uh you know just happy, you know, my, my heart and my my soul is in creating in your pocketbook. Fun, fun yeah, in my pocketbook. <laughs> Everything's tied to, to production and creating something and I uh I live in Long Beach, California with uh, my awesome boyfriend and part-time we have his son and um, I love to salsa dance and uh, I am uh, a pinball player so I love pinball so there's some fun facts about me and that's always awesome (laughs) (laughs) oh right Canada (laughs) oh boy yes Um, I won't sing for you don't worry (laughs) oh (laughs) I bet you did I bet you sing great anyway so it's all good. Not even in the shower. No. <laughs> <laughs> At least she's honest about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, strength, know your weaknesses. Really good, good self-grounding knowledge. Well, know? as long as there's alcohol, we sing awesome every time. So. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is: uh, How did you? Uh, how were you guys able to cast uh, Bill? Uh, Obersa Obers, uh, Jr. for uh, Vic. Um, yeah, I'll take that question. Um, so this project, you know, there was, I don't know, I think the universe was behind us and getting it made. Um, and so there were so many collaborations. And one of those was through our director, Joe Hendricks. <clears throat> Excuse me. He uh, had a, had done a short film with Bill shot him the script and said, what do you think? And, um, you know, we chatted with Bill. He, he understood the vision of what we were trying to do and loved the character of Bill or of Vic. And 
um, after many rounds of negotiations with his management team, uh, he was able to join us uh, on the picture. And uh, we had a really, really narrow window. Uh, so we, we, we had like a total of 17 days that he had a gap between two productions that he was already committed to, but he really felt strongly about the picture and, and wanted to do it. So that's, uh, that's how that one came to be. But we had, I mean, so many people helped bring talent to the table. It was really a collaboration on on everyone's part and and um being you know making making that come together. That cool. guy is freaking awesome too. And he's been in like every B horror movie and all, he does a lot of A list stuff too, but he's like a modern day Boris Karloff, I think. Yeah, yeah we were really fortunate for him. And he's such a even now and I've seen the film probably I don't know, a good thousand times it's still he has where it still gives me like the hair stand up on the back of my neck and his looks and his stares and his approach to things. I'm just like, you give me the heebie jeebies. He's a very intense he, dude, yes. Yeah, but he's as talented as he is professional. Well, yeah. I, that is yeah. a very true point. Yeah. Uh, he actually but followed. That guy is super busy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He does seem like he's busy. He actually followed us on Twitter and I actually messaged him one day and I was just like, hey, um, I'm Paul from Everything Horror Podcast. Um, I'm actually supposed to be interviewing Dan and Megan, and, and uh, this is before you got included, Ryan, but as far as I knew anyway. Um, I was just like, um, hey, I don't know if you have free time. Maybe you could join our little uh, conversation. And um, he unfortunately uh, got back to me like a week or so later, and he was just like, yeah, sorry, I was busy filming a, a movie overseas, and he was just like, I'm trying to remember exactly how he worded it, but he goes, some, he said along something along the lines of, like, he loved holding the uh, the axe and swinging that bloody axe as he pretty much put it, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he had a good time. He did a number on the house for that thing. Oh, I yeah. bet. Like a, oh, I bet. A lot of damage. <laughs> I think there was four doors we had to replace afterwards. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good job. At a door got into character. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever uh, Actually, fit the character. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he goes, I mean, he. I talked to him kind of after, after you know, when we're going through different cuts and we got into doing some of the posts on the film and the, you know, doing our AR lines or wild lines and so forth. And he was, he, he shared with me, he said, you know, it took me a while to come out of that character. That was a deep, dark place. And I'm like, I believe it. Just looking at some of the performances he gave us. And so, and, and, you know, some of the, he had different takes and different scenes and yeah, he, he could, I, I totally believe that it took him a moment to come back out of that character because, it, and put him down because Vic was a, Vic, Vic was a tortured soul. That's for sure. Agreed. And we'll, we'll get a little bit more into his character questions uh, later on, which we will, like, do, like, a warning spoiler or, or before then. But, uh, yeah, we were just kind of curious because I've actually seen Bill in um, two other films, which was uh, A Haunting in Salem and Scream mm-hmm. at the Devil was the uh, other two that I've seen him in. And he does a really good acting job, so... Check out Nuns with Guns and Abraham Lincoln versus Zombies. He's uh, one of those two. Okay. He was on Scream Queens this year, too. He was kind of funny and creepy in that. Hmm. I'll have to check that uh, out. Yeah, I did one on, episode, but... Yeah, I think, I think he did on CSI. CSI as well. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah, he's... Yeah, no, he, and you know, he does a lot of live stage performance, too. I mean, he's very... Bill's really talented. That's awesome. He literally re- memorized uh, a 50-page Ray Bradbury story that he then performed live at this theater in Los Angeles. I went and saw it. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Holy cow. Yeah. I don't know That's how, impressive. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I don't remember my own name half the time. <laughs> but, yeah, he's good like that. Oh, Dude, boy. I told you to write it in your hand. Okay. I don't um, remember that. Next question um, I want to ask is, how did it feel to win the award for the best horror feature film at Burbank International Film Festival? What was more important was that Louis Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk, (laughs) gave us a standing ovation. 
yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's God. great. He that's fantastic. That's amazing. That was yeah. freaking awesome. I that bet that made your guys' day right there. Or yeah. night. Or night, <laughs> yeah. Made our year. Made our yeah, year. That, yeah, that, that worked, too. So awesome. Yeah, they sat us somewhat near to the Baldwin table as well, minus Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, was fun. Uh, it was it was fun to um uh you know get dressed up and uh we took a limo we took a limo up to the to the event in uh in up in I think it was Burbank. Yeah, it was Burbank. <laughs> um which a funny story enough at the award ceremony for the festival, the, the limo died like fifty feet from the red carpet. <laughs> so we all had to get up, get out of the limo and like walk up the hill. <laughs> That's the metaphor you know, for the picture. It was, yeah, it's been an uphill, you know, we're going to do this. We're the, you know, it's, I always say it's been our Goonie moment. Like, you know, it's been, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a ride time. and a half. This is our time. The, the you know, drunken Goonies. Yeah, we're the drunken Goonies. And it Ruth, was, uh, baby. <laughs> by the way, Goonies is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we, you know, we don't give up, and so yeah, when this limo broke down, yeah, we all just got out, took some photos because it was funny, and then rolled into the uh, uh, into the event. And you know, we we were, it, you know, award shows are very very long, mm-hmm. and so you know, we had a nice dinner, we chatted with people, and you know, not. I, I think we rolled in there with the expectation that hey, how cool is it that we were here? That was just kind of the wow factor for for myself, um, and. It was just a lot of it was a lot of fun, and so when they announced it, I was like, "What?" And you know, it was a really, 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 um, you know, to to have your industry say you've done a good job, and to have the fans saying the same thing, uh, it's just it's so humbling. It's so lovely. It's it's you know, as a, you know, creative people, we kind of put our heart and soul into this, and. So you you put it out there and you you just you're I'm always on pins and needles after every review because I'm like oh god oh god you know it's nerve wracking so to to have that recognition is um you know it's just a really it's a really really lovely lovely feeling and and um, you know we're just so proud of our little gem and and the fact that we have honored the horror community I hope and they, and they respected the fans and respected the genre and giving them something to enjoy um that was our goal so when you know we feel we've met that goal so you know the accolades that come with it is just you know such a wonderful moment and we're so thankful that the fans and our community uh like it that was an elegant answer i would go with it was just fucking awesome it was like (laughs) making love to a just a beautiful beautiful horse (laughs) <laughs> oh, geez, um. I don't know. <laughs> if we're talking about beautiful corpses, I would rather go with like the Wake Dead beautiful corpses. I mean that, but that's another. Yeah. Time. <laughs> but that, but that's, that's another, another episode. <laughs> that's another episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which um, I'm just gonna throw it out there, but uh, Dan and Ryan, if I were to send my copy of Wake Dead to you guys, would you guys sign it. <laughs> In blood, I will literally. Oh it my God, that is awesome! Sign it in my blood. All right, you can sign it in your blood if you want. I'll make True. sure of that. No, I would be honored. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that. Thank you. Um. Yeah. After this episode, uh, we can talk a little bit more of that. Yeah, you just made Paul's day. Yeah, I don't know if you realize day. that. Yeah. <laughs> I I won't lie. Cool. Well, I'm I, glad you liked it. Oh, well, you know, I actually enjoyed all the eight films to die for as a whole, even though there were quite a few that kind of were not so great in my own opinion. But maybe that's because I'm too picky, too, especially since I'm almost I'm going to be here's a little fun fact about me. Um I'm actually going to be 30 this year on October 13th, which is actually Friday the 13th. So there's a little fun oh, fact. Yeah, nice. oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, party it up. Yeah, exactly. You should have a ditch party. Hell yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we actually want to go to we actually want to go to Salem, Massachusetts for his 30th birthday. Nice. They just opened up the um the uh headquarters for the Church of Satan in Salem, Massachusetts. I just heard about People that. People are too. very upset. I yeah, right next to that. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the next <laughs> <laughs> Well, good place for it then. Why not? 
Get the little kids involved then. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that would be totally awesome. Start them young. Start them young. Start them, yeah. Start them young. Um, all right, so the next question is, how did uh, Mrs. Uh, Donna Tucci, I think is how you pronounce her last Mrs. Name? Donna Tucci. Uh, yeah. Uh, Donna Tucci. Yeah, Donna Tucci. Uh, a lonely <laughs> widow coming to writing for uh, for this day, especially when she seemed to be somebody who is trying to find somebody because she lost her husband, but yet she became one of the victims. So how did that kind of turn yeah, out well, to we be? Just, in a structural sense, she is what we call a reflection character that just, you know, she runs into, you know, she kind of gives us insight to the neighborhood sets up a character and um which was played by the awesome lynn lowry i don't know if you remember her from like the original day of the dead and yep. uh the crazies and i, I think the she was on the love boat yes the OG, and... the yeah she was a, a george romero person back oh, okay. in the day. but um yeah she she set up a lot of things and um you know she, it's a horror movie so she also provided us with a fun kill very nice. And uh, we, we we thought that scene would be fun and kind of creepy too, and just kind of set the tone. And that that's just kind of what I thought about it. Plus, you know, I I thought it played into the the whole uh, uh, the feel of something that would be reflective of the 1980s slasher movement. Hmm, very cool. I guess that would be my answer. All right. Well, um, then we'll kind of <coughs> kick it into the next gear, which is uh, pretty much around the same question. But how did, like, the teenagers, the, the rest of the characters... The inspiration for the teenagers in your writing. Put all the voices in our heads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to our own Pretty years. self-explanatory. <laughs> so, I see that you really identify so with Max. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're all reflection characters, and and they were you know fun, and and we needed to get some teenagers into a house, but you didn't you don't you don't just want to bring in some bland characters, so you you give them all a personality. So there's you know there's the goth chick, the jock, the drunk, the slut, and you know, but you you want to make them a little more rounded and less two dimensional, and all the actors did a pretty good job. And it was uh, it was fun, and I think that they really brought out the the essence of their character, and then that essence was spilled from their stomachs and throats and <laughs> severed heads later on in the movie, which was just yeah, totally goddamn fun. Yeah. By the way, that goth that goth chick, wow. <laughs> Andy suicide. <laughs> wow. Andy suicide. I was just know. like, holy cow! I was like, this chick is just. She's some woman. <laughs> she doesn't. Go she uh, she right. definitely she definitely wafted the uh, the uh, dominatrix uh, essence in the yes in the, my personal opinion. Yeah, I can. Yeah, Google her, you'll find some fun pictures of her too. Oh, do you know? <laughs> some wonderful texture. <laughs> some wonderful texture. Oh, oh I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> texture is a good word. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right. You just heard this first on this podcast. That's right. So go check it out, apparently, for some nice texture photos. Um, <laughs> so this is your question. Um... We noticed that uh, Vic, Vic, um, he after he like kills everybody off like one by one or whatever or the two at a time or whatever, he folds their their um their belongings. clothes their belongings and stuff like folds it neatly and puts it like on top of them like takes the you know folds up the the pillowcase and puts it over her head and then folds up the clothes neatly and puts it on top of the bodies in the closet. Or like the scene with uh, the goth girl with her hand. She uh, neatly put the hand in her stocking yeah. and, and the, and yeah, the and dildo. dildo yep. Yeah, so what's that about, guys? Just the symbolism for that. Well, he's just a symmetric person. He, he He's a tormented soul and I think he's tormented with everything that he does. And so he still has that aspect of humanity during all this because he's just, he's basically getting a job done and and make her father pay. Hello? Uh, hello? You guys there? Yes, I can, I can hear oh, you now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Dan, sorry. You broke up a little yeah, bit. Say that again? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
Um, no, I was just uh, he's he's a tormented soul. He's got he's got a job to do, and there's still an aspect of humanity that's left to him. And so when he's done killing this collateral damage, he's got a little respect for them. So he he folds them and, and neatly places them or, or kisses them. <laughs> and, yeah, we noticed yeah, we that noticed as well. That. <laughs> a very quirky glimmer of the humanity that is left inside of him. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's uh, also, I mean. He looks great naked. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, like the shower scene with the, the buckets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Baptizing yeah. <laughs> himself. So. Father. Buckets you know. of balls. Buckets of balls, yeah. <laughs> he's a father in morning, so I think he's still... Cleansing himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. You can say. This you want me to say this did. one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We noticed that <laughs> Trina spits up like this lime green stuff when she's killed, and Max spits up like this foamy orange stuff. Um. We're trying to figure out what yeah. that was supposed to be. If it would like an effect from like the alcohol or drugs or like, could that would kind of just. <laughs> Because they both like spit up like different colored I'm things when they died. Way to lie to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we'll take we'll we'll take careful thought in it. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I, uh, Josh and Sierra Russell did an amazing job, and uh, I think Joe, the director, and and uh, Josh and Sierra got together, and they just wanted to, you know, we we had a, a low budget, so we we're Having fun with it, and I don't know, colors are fun. Yeah, and when when people die, we <laughs> raise this question in the viewer's head of, what the hell did they eat? <laughs> yeah, that, that, exactly. yeah. That's, that's what they were going for. <laughs> yeah, because we were Get definitely trying to figure that out. And we think what, we think yeah. Trina's dad was a gremlin. It it may have been striped. <laughs> that's what we're hoping. For. <laughs> also, that, a fantastic that, movie. Answer, no fucking idea. Don't <laughs> <Charles laughs> gremlin after midnight. <laughs> Bad stripes. All right. Um, the next question is, um, Officer Man. Or um, he, we I'm assuming he was in the military, and the question is pretty much is like, uh, was he in the military, and is that why he was really hard on Wayman, the Doctor Wayman? I'm assuming Detective Wayman. Or Detective Wayman. Yeah, uh, the the lady. Yeah, the lady that was lady taking Cobb. the phone calls. And was that because the way he was treating her, was or was it because she was snooping too far into the case and yeah, he didn't she like was it? Snooping around for the case is that why? Because it seemed like every time um, you mentioned about the case, it was like man was just like Shh, like hush your mouth kind of thing, like <laughs> like get back yeah. to calling. Yeah, he was a complex. First of all, yeah, he is. He's a he's a jarhead like myself. He was in the Marines. And then, you know, I, I'm pretty sure, in fact, I, I know that he was a uh, WWF wrestler guy in the 80s, too. But um, he wanted to go and he was like, yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get nuts. And I remember he called uh, Megan and Joe and I, and he was just like, do you mind if I make this character a closeted homosexual? And, you know, so he's, he's hating on women, but he's also <laughs> trying to hide this, uh, this secret as well. So, yeah, he's sex. <laughs> Closeted, homosexual. Babe, breathe. <laughs> breathe. I think yeah. Paul's dying over here. He's trying not to laugh. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he would call me and he would say some just, you know, he's he's great. Uh, he was great in Glee as a drill instructor, too. But um, cool. And he's like the star of uh, a couple of the Puppet Master movies. But, um, oh, yeah. oh that's where I've seen him. And, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's he's on a Carl's Jr. commercial right now too. He's got this weird looking mustache, but no, he's <laughs> got a great sense of humor about him too. And yeah, I I say all this now because he's also like six foot five and weighs two hundred and fifty pounds, and he'll kill me. But um, yeah, no, fun <laughs> guy, but, you know, off the charts fun with the the horror characters. So there's there's. A number of different layers that definitely came out, and and I think, as a fact, he 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 just kind of took that character and he stood out with it too, which was fun for this kind of a movie. <coughs> Very cool. If that answers your question. Yeah, that does. That 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 does. Okay, beware. He had the best kill scene too. 
Hmm. Okay, beware, listeners. Uh, uh, uh. Spoiler alert. From this moment on, if this you do not want to listen alert. anymore, we understand because we're probably going to go into the ending just a little bit, but we're not going to spoil the Oh, ending. we're definitely going to talk about our favorite kill scene. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yes. We are we are going to go there. So, yeah, well, this is a okay, warning. Okay, so what inspired Officer Man's death scene, which is also my favorite death scene? <laughs> Megan, that was a nightmare, wasn't it? Oh God! Yeah, I'll take that question. So fair enough. If we, if any of the kills, I'm not wearing we, pants. We, we wanted. To, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's a real problem with keeping pants on the set. No, um, any of the kill scenes, we really wanted to make them complex. We wanted to make them real mechanical effects. We didn't. We didn't want to go into CGI. And when Dan and Ryan wrote the scene. You know, Officer Man gets tortured, and it was supposed to end at the Weed Whacker, mm -hmm. and the Weed Whacker was supposed to take him out. And when we got to the scene, it was super late. It was the last shot of the day. We were beyond the filming permit time, like super intense, and the Weed Whacker just wouldn't cut into Officer Man's dummy stomach. Like, it just Plus was like... the blade. It, it didn't show up it on, wasn't, the, on the film either. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it just it just didn't it wasn't working and so it was kind of this great action moment where one of our one of the actors um who played the principal, Principal Gallman, uh Ronald Burkhart, he says, We need a chainsaw. Let's just go get a chainsaw. That's not gonna work, it's not working and so we literally went or he went to the local hardware rental place and rented a chainsaw. We had it on standby and so when the when we shot the scene and it wasn't working, we, uh, you know, they came up with the great extra, Bill came up with his great extra lines of, you know, that's just a little foreplay. And, uh, was Which was a great line and, for this scene, by oh, the way. Oh, totally, it totally, totally <laughs> worked. And, and then it all just kind of, kind of transpired. And the cat, like, everyone who wasn't in the garage, but, like, watching the monitor outside, we were dead silent. We were holding our breath. We were like, please, please make this work. Like, let it be, because we were, we were so under the gun. And when that chainsaw struck and we saw the footage, we just were, like, cheering, because it, it just, it came to life. Like, this is what we were going for. This was, you know, Josh and Sierra Russell's, like, this was their biggest, most complex scene next to one other scene. And, um, you know, they had put their heart and soul into all the effects. And this one, we were just like, this has got to be their, this was going to be a calling piece for them. And so um, it, it came to I be, but it was really was intense. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, it was a moment of like, oh my God, if we don't get this, we're screwed. So uh, it was really, um, they always say, uh, what is it? Um, necessity is a, uh, you know, the mother of, of invention. And uh, so by necessity, that, that chainsaw came into the picture and got thrown into the script. And it's my favorite kill scene as well, to be honest. So. Very cool. Interesting That's choice of power tools, by the way, chainsaw and a weed whacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what was the other thing, Megan? We tried to buy something else before the chainsaw that didn't work either. What the hell do you call that thing? A hedge, a hedge clippers. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh, yeah, remember the when we had to return that? Like oh, the, that would have been. Weed. No, it was like, it was it was chainsaw-ish, but it, yeah. It oh, I know what you're like, talking about. Yeah, it's used to trim hedges. Yeah, yeah but failed. it's like a chainsaw. Yeah. failed on that one. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. yeah. But all I'm going to say is thank you, Ronald Burkhardt, for uh, the run to, like, to say, like, we need a chainsaw. And we're like, okay, you know. <laughs> so it was cool. But that 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 was just how in sync everybody was to make this film happen. You know, it was it was cool. pretty cool. It was pretty cool. That is um, cool. We also, I think we broke the chain because then the tie got tied up in it. So I think there was a repair bill on that too. <laughs> so, I wasn't there yeah. when we returned the power tool, but um, I'm sure there were some strange looks because if they're looking at it, they're like, "What is going on with this tool? Why is there blood on it? Why does it smell weird like pig dead?" But, oh yeah! Oh, yes, those guys that claim to claimed kill to keep somebody, clean the carpet no, wasn't real. <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. Though. That does sound yeah. like fun. Um, the next question we have. It was. Oh yeah, I, as long as it worked, I mean, it worked good. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. sensual. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
Another thing we noticed too is when back, like we're gonna go back a little bit, but when <clears throat> Vic is chasing Jenny and Mike uh, upstairs, um, right when they get into the room, and uh, Jenny's Vic, bedroom, yeah, yeah, and Vic is about to <clears throat> like, I'm assuming like axe uh, Jenny. You 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 hear Mike shout no, and then Vic kind of stopped and like looked at Mike like confused, like like what. And then, you know, Jenny gets escaped, and then he kind of looks at him. But at this point in time, we don't really know what's going on, so he just kind of leaves Mike alone and goes after Jenny. But, like, is there a reason why Mike said no to Vic to make him kind of look confused? Like, why he chose to say no to him instead of letting, yeah, like, letting him kill Jenny? Well, that I would ask Megan if, <clears throat> if that's something we're allowed to talk about. <laughs> uh oh. Um, uh oh. This is spoiler definitely a, alert. This is a spoiler alert for anyone who I don't know. doesn't, you know, want to, you know, in 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 you know this the plot has a a very poignant twist, and um, I think, and I correct me if I'm wrong, Dan. Um, we wanted to layer it in that was enough. A setup for it. It was a setup that that people wouldn't feel like, what are you doing? You just kind of, you know flipped it on us. So we they were really Dan and Ryan were really strategic in putting in little little things that Structural if you worked backwards details. Okay. then it would make sense. That like but you just didn't catch it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So okay. those things um, that sticks out in the back of your mind that you recall later, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well the only Structural thing that, build up. Right. Well the reason why I just noticed that is because like he killed off everybody else at the time and then he you just see him kinda of, like leave Mike alone at first. So instead of killing him right then and there, which I think would have been a cool idea if you kinda made it look like he killed him before like uh mm -hmm. he chased it before he like turned around and chased her off. So that way it would, maybe you you would have the viewer like think uh okay mike is dead because you know he just happened to save yeah. jenny and now she's done for because there's nobody to protect her but yeah i mean i would uh, i mean i see what you're saying too about if you might not want to say it too because yeah it is that twist in the story too which in the garage and scene plot twist yeah <laughs> which is right next like that's the scene literally right after that pretty much so agreed but it, yeah, it, it kind of, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I I definitely. It was a jab before the uppercut. Yeah, 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 go. exactly. Um, I'll let you take this one. Um, besides uh the band Swirl, did anyone else compose the other music in the um that was in the flashbacks? Yeah, Swirl we composed a smile on my heart. Sorry, you're breaking up, Dan. Oh, my bad. I'm going to stop talking. You go ahead. <laughs> we we had a lot of um, music contributors. Um, we had... So the flashback scene music, that was from our composer, Giona Ostinelli. He a uh, phenomenal guy to work with, and he really... Sometimes scenes can be over overly done with music, and, and he was very cautious and very... Um, you know, music was in when it was needed, and it was the silence was part of this film, and so it had a really good balance. And then we also had um, a lot of, um, well, you know, fun fact: Josh Russell has his own um, band, and and so the opening scene when Jenny's looking in the mirror, that's actually his song. So um, you know, we were really it's called Swiftly, so that was written and performed by Josh Russell. Um, and then we also had. Um, you know, the Meaning of Life song where um, Vic is in the car just kind of driving to his lair with the parents. Um, that was uh, The Meaning of Life, and that was written by Michael P. Hogan, so from the band Streamline. And, uh, of course, Swirl, they were awesome in giving us such such powerful, you know, more of the heavier side of, a, of the soundtrack and um, with their Rise Up and their We Are Alive and Spell. And um, we actually had a really fun, you know, the opening scene music, I Quit the Drugs My Parents Gave Me, mm -hmm. which is laughing. when we're all in the party scene. Isn't that a great, like... That, that is I so just, great. I, I will Yeah, agree. what I... 
when I got to connect with Joey Welch and hear, uh, which came via um, um, uh, yeah, uh, actually Ron Burkhardt's wife. Um, this was uh, a friend of hers she knew from college um, uh, back in Indiana. And she's like, I'm like, I don't have the right music for this to open the picture with. Like, I, I was really struggling and. And, you know, we're listening to different artists, and she's like, I got, you know, you should talk to my friend Joey. And I'm like, okay. So I listened to some of the music he written, and when I heard that song and that hit, I quit, you know, it, it just totally, I was like, this is perfect, because it's such an ironic song that I quit the drugs my parents gave me, you know? It, it was uh, it just it was just kind of like trying to set up the tone for, for, for what, what's what to come. To, yeah, for what's to come, and then... um. Our uh, our spin the bottle song, which is also a favorite song of mine, Loaded Life, which is also in the credits. Um, you know that came from the band Temper Temper, and we're really thankful that Jordan from Revolution Records um, allowed us to, to use it. So um, you know we were really really blessed. I think that's one of the hardest things in in making film, especially on <laughs> on, on no budget, is to have a great soundtrack and have a great uh, vibe with the music. And, you know, again, all these artists trusted us with their music and trusted us that we were going to get this done. And it's been a, you know, all the people react to the music. People love the music. I mean, I think Swirl's about to go on tour because of um, people are really connecting with the music in, in the film. And, and they've been, you know, they've been interviewed a whole bunch and just really, really, um, been able to connect with with their audience as well so it's been cool it's been really we're really really lucky for all the music that we had that, that came to the picture very nice yeah um i do yeah. agree that music is takes a very important role when it comes to film because it helps drag mm -hmm. the person in but um it also like either makes it creepy you know party -y, whatever's going on with the music like what mm -hmm. it's supposed to represent i think it's a very important role like um we did yeah. an episode about the witch uh by robert mm -hmm. eggers and one thing i mentioned is the music where uh robert eggers put the music for that specific scene just helped draw you in and make it more disturbing depending on what the scene was. So, I mean, I'm a big mm -hmm. music guy. Was that a guy. fun movie? Oh, mm -hmm. I loved that movie. It was great. I, I loved did too. it. It was creepy. It was so, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything. It was different. It was like very cute, Kubra, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Uh, I agree. What Now, what if I told you Robert Eggers is working on remaking Nosferatu? Oh, no way. Yeah. That would be huge. Yeah, he's definitely he's got that that feel for it. That yeah, would be an awesome pitch. Yep, that was his next project idea was to uh, work on um, Nosferatu, which oh, I'm wondering. Yeah, so I heard that, and I just hope that he can pull it off since that's one of my favorite uh, black and white silent movies. So, oh, that's classic horror right there. Damn right. That's, that's yeah, that's that's some shoes to fill, but that I think he's a very competent director. He could definitely pull that off. I agree. I completely agree. Um, so I love how the witch ended. Oh yeah, me too. Um, I wanted to ask something really quick because um, I noticed throughout the movie, Vickers's character is eating apples. Is that in significance <laughs> to the? Is that in significance to the day that his that his family got into the car accident? Like, did they go like apple picking or something that day, or what's the significance of the the apples? Everybody <laughs> asks that. It's, and that was that was a bill thing, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Um, I thought it was cool, but yeah, he he, he was There's going that. biblical. Yeah, there was. I mean, people have said kind is it a biblical, biblical thing? The Adam and Eve, the falling from paradise. Um, is it you know were the children apple picking um, with his family? Vitamin B deficiency. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, you know, Bill took his character and he. He he layered so many layers into it, and um, you know I I always say that the apples are open to your interpretation, and um, you know all of the above. <laughs> Very cool. Really, okay, uh, fair enough. We just you know there was we just wanted you know this, this is a really kind of unique uh, I I think 
monster, but an empathetic monster, a sympathetic monster in, in what his actions are. But then he's also this man that, that has lost. And so, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Kind of, you know, like there's so many different levels that an apple can represent. And so um, I think Bill was just really smart to layer that in and, and make that part of his character and have, have some fun with it. And um, but it's, everyone always you, asks, you, what do the apples mean? What do the apples Well, mean? you take one bite of an apple and you're deemed a sinner, all of a man. So he has a blatant <laughs> disregard for that. He's like, you know, I'm going to eat a thousand apples. What are you making that? <laughs> yeah. See, like it's, you could go deep with the apples if you really wanted to. Yeah. Ball, yeah. Very <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have ADD. No, it's I, okay. It's okay. Good. It's okay because you know what? Our podcast is um, rated explicit, anyways. Yeah. On so iTunes, it's all good. <laughs> on iTunes, it, it, what do we tell you that is parental content, parental advisory? So we made yeah, sure of that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I figured yeah. we can't do a clean podcast without some fun and some swear words. So yeah. um Yeah, we like yeah. to dirty it up, so yeah. by all means you guys are I good. mean there was there was one point where I thought we were gonna have a clean episode, but then somebody threw out the uh F bomb and then I'm just like, I oh, think well, that was me. Yeah. Oh, there I it goes. I think it was me. <laughs> I think that was my my I bad. That. <laughs> I'm like I'm like it's way I was like this is way too clean you know? yeah and I just dropped like the f bomb like since we talk about everything horror whether it's you know, films games and whatever like we just we play a game called Killing Floor with a couple buddies of ours yeah and, Killing Floor too and like we'll we'll be on like a certain map and we'll just be like you know. This beach is not bloody enough. We need to make it more or bloody. Or this room is too clean. It needs to be bloodied up. Or... Yeah. Yeah. So for any yeah. So for anybody listening well, too, um, we play on PlayStation Four. So yeah. we're everybody down for that. So we play on feel PS4 free to add us. Platform. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. Red Queen. I I'm Red Queen podcast. underscore eighty five. Oh, did you? And then. Well, I don't know if you just heard. I what? believe it was Ryan that just pronounced it, and um, or just said it. But Ryan listened to your uh, Outlast podcast. Oh, what did you think of that? I listened to it. That was Dan. We sound we sound very similar. We look nothing alike, but we sound similar. <laughs> I thought it was fun, but the thing is, I I I haven't played a video game since Sega Genesis. I like I'm very disciplined. And I knew that if I played video games, I would not write. And so I, I tried not to play video games. I just listened to the podcast, yes, which was fun. And you guys seem to be having a lot of fun talking yeah, about I, the video we, games Outlast. Yeah, we thought it was really, yeah, we thought it'd be really interesting if I did an all-ladies podcast for Outlast. Yeah. So that's, um, I got a couple of our friends and myself. Yeah. And uh, Paul was sitting on the couch listening to us talk. He was just our our listener, but yeah, he thought I would draw well. down note for her if if uh, she wasn't getting something. So I was just like, hey, like you know, nothing. I, my did, some I, like, hey, you I did some pretty good. I did some pretty good research. Thank you very much. <laughs> I researched that game pretty good in Outlast Two. Cool. And just wait till Outlast hey, have Two. Have you comes. played the Friday the Thirteenth game? I haven't gotten a chance to play it because it's not out yet, but we have tried the beta a little bit. But, uh, okay. That thing is like the, the mother where I'm like, God, I might have to break down and start playing video games. Um, should I actually tell these guys how much I spent on that game? Oh, for Kickstarter yeah, for it? For oh, yeah, by all means, do it. You're like okay. the big Jason Voorhees <laughs> fan, so you might as well let him in. All right, I will let everybody know. Now, uh, cause this is the first time I'm letting the public actually know, but uh, I backed Friday the 13th on Kickstarter, and I actually waited for the stretch goal to hit PS4, or a console, I'm, uh, nice. and when it hit that, that's when all hell broke out for me. I, my inner Jason came out, and I was just like, okay, they are offering a steel machete case signed by everybody, including Kane, one of the original Jason. Oh, wow. Game and then, awesome. yeah. yeah, and that was two hundred and seventy-five dollars alone. But, wow. but I ended up getting add-on, which was like another hundred and ten bucks. So in total, mm-hmm. I spent three hundred and eighty-five dollars on Friday the Thirteenth, the video game. To back it on to Kickstarter. It well, thank you. That's, that's cool. That that's that's that thing might sway my mind. 
Yeah. I will I definitely be uh, posting a picture of that bad boy when I physically get it. But, uh, That's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So cool. I agree. <laughs> well, but, speaking of games, uh, this day actually has a game. It's uh, not not a video game, <laughs> but the next fun thing that we love, it's a drinking game. Uh-oh. So um, that will be releasing in the next couple weeks, and um, the goal is to not let – don't be another one of Vic's victims. Huh. And it's kind of in the vein of – you know how – you ever been to a Rocky Horror Picture Show? And there's a uh, – that, that fun cult following and there's the, the interactions and the lines and the actions. And so it's in that vein, but with a whole bunch of alcohol because it's ditch day party. What do you do at a ditch day party? Typically you drink. So um, that will be actually be up on our website in the next couple of weeks. And um, Tell us about the hall yeah. passes, Megan Waters. Uh, yes. <laughs> the more lines you know in the film with your character, oh, no. whatever character you pick to drink, you can, um, if you can say your lines in tandem, you can get out of doing shots. Because there's about 32 shots that you might have to do if you don't know your your character's lines. Oh, God. oh boy. And, which I think would lead to extreme alcohol poisoning. So it is play at your own risk. We take no responsibility. But... Um, so if you're if you're still standing at the end of the game, then we say let the ditch club, you know, our ditch Yeah, it's just like our, we need you, you know, to sign I mean, this waiver, you know, that we're not responsible yeah. for what happens to you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we do want to see game. a picture of it after you play. And so if you're standing, take a selfie and post it to our Instagram, which is Ditch Day the Movie, and uh, say that, you know, you beat Vic. And if your friends have passed out beside you, take a picture of them and hashtag them as Vic got me. So it, uh, it's just a fun. Oh, that's an awesome you know, idea. It's fun. I like that. Yeah, and we, yeah, we really want to, you know. Now what? What website is this going to be on? Film. It will be on thefilmditch.com, and um, we're we're just putting the final graphic design on the rules. And there's actually two levels of gameplay, so you can play it kind of on a you know just a basic level. I just want to kick it back, have a few drinks, and not get too complicated. But if you want to play on the Ditch Day Cult level, um, that's a whole other level um, oh in terms of um, actions and lines. And it's not just drinking. It's, you know, can you survive the drinking, the punishments, and the, the shameless acts that have been asked of you? <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, we, stay in, we stay in the vein of the film. It's, you know... You know, if everyone's speaking at the end of this, different colors, we'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and Rainbow you party. just heard that on our Rainbow podcast. Party. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> this is the first time we've actually shared about it. So this Very is nice. the world premiere of of uh, the Disney drinking game. So well, um, that's awesome. Thank you for yeah, sharing that. Have fun with it. Speaking, yeah. Yeah, speaking so, of, make sure everybody goes and supports this video, this game. It's not a video game. game, but you're still getting it's your a drinking uh, your, game. Your, Drunk on, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So a fun Friday night or if any day, then this would be the fun game. And um, you know, it's is there a specific female. kind of alcohol? <laughs> it's whatever. Fire it's water. Um, you do need well because there's an action. Every time you see an apple, you have to drink some apple cider beer. So you do need apple cider beer. Other than that, pick your poison and good luck. <laughs> we'll just go with so, hard cider beer then. Purple Dragon. Yeah. yeah. Purple Dragon, did yeah. I just say? Beer? Yeah. 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 Purple oh, drink. Um, oh, jeez. But, you know, there's, you know, the game has, like, some, some actions. Uh, there's times when you're called to punch the neighbor to the left of you, you know, dole out the purple nurples. Like, it's, it's, it's a crazy, you know, the, we were talking about it the other day, and we were like, well, what do we call the game? Or what, you know? And I'm like, it's really, it's a fun horror film with a fucked up drinking game is what it is. Very nice. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. So. Um, no, 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 no. I got uh, a fucked up drinking game for you guys. I actually just showed it to my oh girlfriend my um, a couple months ago. <laughs> and we played it. And we played it. And too. we survived it. And we did survive it. We are troopers. But we didn't really have hard liquor, but we had a lot of beer. And we're just saying that consumed beer was, a lot. Yeah. Let's just say we were uh, down to eight beers left. But if you guys ever heard of the, oh, wow. you guys ever heard of the movie called Thanks Killing? Thanks Killing. Yeah. Thanks Killing. Thanks Killing. 
If not, I have heard of that. I've okay. Seen. There's a drinking game involved <laughs> for this movie. Yeah. You're and gonna you're going to want to drink when you see this movie anyway. Yeah. Drinking game or not. But, Very cool. <laughs> but um, it's the second St. Killing movie, which they call it St. Killing 3, but they skip over St. Killing 2 because the movie <laughs> is having turkey. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put it to you this way. I definitely was saying, what the fuck am I watching quite a bit during this movie. Um, you pretty much have this, this turkey from outer space who's going around killing people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a romantic comedy. Oh, why don't you tell him one of your favorite lines from the movie? Which one? The, gobble, gobble, the, motherfucker? You, you, oh, you've been stuffed. <laughs> you just got, you just been stuffed. Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> since this is a uh, exquetic pod, uh, podcast, we'll just go into this a little bit. So, there's a kinky girl in this. Just like, yeah, the slut kinky, of the movie. Yeah, the slut in the movie. Where she trying to get it on with this one guy, and then at some point in time, Turkey comes in and slits the guy's throat, kills him, and then he gets oh on God. top of her. From behind. Or from behind. Doggy style. And then at one point, uh, she kind of notices there's like something weird going on behind her, and she looks behind her, and it's Turkey, and he goes... You just been stuffed, <laughs> and it's just like, oh my god! I definitely drank quite a bit during this scene. I was like, I was like, wow. Oh, <laughs> that, oh yeah. That sounds like a great first date. It really does. <laughs> well, the turkey had to use a extra small gravy condom. Gravy flavored condom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Where right. I know. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely yep. one of those movies where we'll definitely make you go what the fuck quite a bit and yes. within like the first like 10 seconds ten of the movie 10 seconds of the movie you see boobs yeah so I should watch it with my two year old no <laughs> no no you do not want to watch this with your children this is not this is not PG-13 I mean I know you were loud this is oh, like okay. this is like rated R <laughs> it's explicit and naughty and, yeah. and that very strange. NC seventeen. That sounds triple X. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty naughty. Yeah. It, it's so freaking bizarre. Very romantic. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. It's so romantic. But yeah, you guys get a chance to check that uh, Saint Killing out. Um, I can post the link up to Saint Killing when I put this episode up too as well. Um, so let's go with the finale with the final question for this episode. Um. It is marketing the movie, which I'm assuming this is going to be Megan. Um, this is going to be your question. But uh, I noticed it's just digital on Amazon and there's no physical. I don't know if you guys are planning on physical copies or what was going on about that. So uh, we are working with a, a fun distributor, uh, distributor uh, ITN Distribution, uh, who saw the film in... Um, you know, really thought that, hey, this is, this is something that they want to get involved with. So when they um, elected to rep us and we did that deal, um, you know, we had a lot of discussions about strategy and, and what was going to be the case. And when you, they're, they're you know, we're doing the, the digital release first. And as that grows, then um, there'll be um, uh, potential for a uh, Blu-ray release. Um, with a lot of extra content on it, just from what we have within the film, and so that's that's um that's a to be determined. Um, but when you look at what the market is like from the the business side of things, um, and where our fans are watching and how they're watching, um, you know, it's it's all streaming, it's all downloading, and I think it's important that you respect how people want to watch the movies they love or the movies they have interest in. So, um, you know, this is never going to be a theatrical release. Um, because our fans, you know, the, they're more into more into the streaming, more into the online, more into the um, digital content, and so that's that's where we're at. But I I would love to see, and I I'm sure I, the same with the boys is is to see kind of a you know a you know a hard case. Here's the DVD uh, with the special features because I I love special features in any any film, and you don't really get that now with the digital downloads. Um, but well, there's yes just no. so much behind the the story. Yeah, you know, there's so much behind it. Yeah. So we uh, we're we're hopeful, and it's just taking 
you know, seeing how the picture releases. We the original world premiere was in Germany, and that's been doing well. And, wow. and you know, the German fans are loving it. And then uh, we went over to Brazil and Korea, and um, UK is now checking it out. Um, and then we had our domestic release within the US um, on uh, end of January. And so it's just little, you know, territory by territory. And you know, we, we would we'd love to see a, a hard a hard you know hard yeah, copy hard DVD. Copy. Um, yeah. So it's a hard copy, but it's just. Um, you, you know, just where people are watching, how they're watching, you know. Um, so that that that's where it's at. That makes sense. Yeah, because I I yeah. personally like holding the item in my hand and being like, oh, my precious, kind of like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it would be cool tangible. too, because yeah, something tangible, and you know, it would be, you know, it's like when CDs were really awesome, and you had the insert, and you could like unfold it and see all the lyrics, and you know, it's it's that kind of deal, and so. Um, it's a question of uh, they have to, you know, the business side of it. They have to decide if it's if that's still a market that's that's worth it. So we're also because we're not a rated film yet. So, um, and we when we you know when Dan Ryan and I and and the, and the gang got together to do this, we were really we didn't want to make a PG thirteen horror film because I don't really believe that that really makes a great horror film. No. Um, and so hell no. Uh, there's a question of the ratings. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, if we could see it on the shelves of Walmart and see it in Redbox and, and have a, like a hard copy of it, that'd be cool. We, we're down for that. It's just a matter of um, fans wanting it and asking for it. So, ask That'd for it. Nice. Yes, they need numbers. So push this. Please, please yeah. buy it. Support it. these guys. It's an amazing film. Right. So do it. It's so great. Do it now. Otherwise, we come to your house with a an axe. <laughs> and we'll yeah. break down your door with it. I love you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bring the weed whacker yeah, yeah. and uh, the chainsaw. I'll, I'm down. I'll bring whatever I got in my basement. <laughs> yeah. Crouch down like Smeagol. <laughs> yeah, that terrifies me. <laughs> I actually have, um, back in, uh, this is going to sound weird, but back in MySpace days, as you guys remember those days, but um, oh, I actually, yeah. I, I, I actually had a very dark profile on there, and I used to get random messages all the time saying, dude, your your profile just scared me. And I'm just like, thank you. I'm doing my job then, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it's awesome. just funny. It's just, I'd, um, and we, anybody can kind of tell you I'm more of a horror guy than anything else because I just love my horror and if it's not horror, then you just get it away from me. So, um, yeah. Come on, no Disney movies for you? I oh, actually, we like Disney movies as well, but we do have a pretty extensive horror collection. Yeah. You just see Dan. I mean, Dan, Dan how many DVDs do you have now? Uh, About 2,500. They, they, like, line his walls. It's crazy. I have about 1,700 a... horror movies. Yeah. Man, I don't think we have that many horror movies. I think but... he's got us beat in that department. Yeah, he's but... got us beat for sure. Yeah. But, uh, oh, we're yeah. working on. Yeah. But we're we're it. also in a we're also in an apartment and we only have so much space. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's well, I have to hide this stuff from my kid now because he finds it. He found Demon Knight Part Two, uh, and oh, he looked at the little cover and he started making this voice. I thought he was possessed for a minute. I think my dad started saying prayers. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so now I'm in the process of hiding all the DVDs. Every oh, no. Which doesn't work because two-year-olds just find everything. Well, wait till he's about yeah, five the and then introduce them to horror. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, he loves, he's, he's like, a, his favorite movie is Terminator. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> he loves it. Which is, in my opinion, that is a slasher movie. The first one. Is. Yeah. Um, I agree. I, I love it. I know I said this in our other podcast, or yeah, our episode um, for the love of horror when our, we had our friend interview me and Tessa to get to know us more. But um, I want to recall that my first ever movie seen like when I'm maybe six or seven was uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and that was me like being that naughty kid too, like you know pretending I'm asleep, but then, like, I quietly walk down the stairs, and then I peek in the living room and be, like, oh, shit, like, maybe I shouldn't be seeing this, but I'm still watching it anyway. 
Yeah, mine was child's Story play. Of Brian and I's life. <laughs> yeah, That's mine was child's house. play when I was little. I was about seven years old, and I saw child's play. Oh, yeah. I, saw I love that. I had to hide the Chucky it. doll. My kid is terrified of the Chucky doll. <laughs> Don't you want to dress him up like a Chucky doll? I did, but I got shot down on that one, too. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> well, well, just to make your For hopes me. a little bit better, there is a new Chucky movie coming out this year in October. The Cult of Chucky, yes. it's called. Yeah. Yep. October 20th is what they're looking at. So I'm so uh, pissed off that the Friday the 13th, which is supposed to be filming right now, was just canceled. And it was supposed to come out on your birthday. Yep. Yep. They had a right he was, he was furious. I'm going to make you more pissed off. Oh, there's yeah. An, an order, yeah, and, I hope you're sitting for this. Yeah, I hope you're sitting for this one. So, there's the an article. Halloween off, too? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Going but, back uh, to Jason going for back a minute. To Jason. But um, I will get to Halloween in a minute, but because that is an, another interesting thing. But anyway, so for Jason fans that are listening and you, uh, the next time they're trying to... Planning to, on filming. Yeah, filming a uh, Friday the 13th film is not until 2019. What? Yep. Yeah, yeah that's shameful. That's, yep. That's 10 years since the last one. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yep. That sucks. Yeah. So that's probably when the rights run out with, with somebody. That sucks. Sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what happens Jason. when you try to make a movie that nobody wants, which was Rings. So they blame Rings for uh, the canon of. I, I read that the Rings tanked, and they so they thought that the same would happen to Friday the Thirteenth, which has one of the most loyal fan bases of yes. any movie in general ever. Which yep. is stupid. Which is okay because at least we got our. Alien coming out because God forbid if I don't mention Alien and then oh gosh yes, speaking of speaking in, of yep. the precious <laughs> yeah speaking of my precious oh God we got one more month for that bad boy but uh no but back to Halloween um so next year we got John Carpenter's Halloween uh comes out sometime <laughs> in October Bride is writing it yes and um now here's another thing that kind of threw me off but. I Apparently, I don't know if this is 100% accurate or what, but we're supposed to be having another Halloween film this year called, like, the... Uh... Yeah, Resurrection? No. Not it's, Resurrection. No, I, I know what you're talking I saw that on IMDb. It's like the the end of evil, or I don't know. It's a stupid title, in my own opinion. I kind of saw it, and I'm just like, what? Like... How come I haven't even heard that there's this new Halloween coming out this year? And this, I don't know, this title doesn't really sound right to me. I don't know. I could it didn't. Wrong. I tried to do some research, too, and I didn't see anything worthy of it. So yeah. I don't know if that's, what what the hell that was. I don't, I don't know. The only way I found it was from uh, imdb.com. That was the only way I yes. found it. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be worth anything. But, um... Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's really it. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything else to add. I mean, if I you do. Guys... I do. Okay, go for it. <laughs> if you're in South Carolina uh, and you're attending the Crimson Screen Film Festival, which is a huge horror film festival, my screenplay TED score is a finalist. So hopefully, I will win. That will be cool. But just to be uh, a finalist in that uh, film festival is awesome. That's all. And all buy right. my movie Bitch. <laughs> it's awesome. Yes, watch it. yes. Buy the damn yeah, movie I, and watch it. And I will have to watch that movie yeah. later, like Lake Dead. Lake Dead, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, will we have will to watch, watch that it later. later. It's a good one. I would appreciate it. And you guys are both awesome, and thank you so much for having us on. I love talking horror, and yeah. especially with you guys. Well, we will have to join us anytime. Yeah, we will have to have you guys on again for like like Dead, like Dead and some other podcasts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, anytime, any day, that would be so sweet. Yeah, we. I mean. And, we live and breathe horror, so I mean. Yeah, and we also have. As do I. We also have seven seasons planned out already, already. for our podcast. Oh, very very cool. Yes, I'm a very fan. Cool. And we've even got we've even got some that um are like holiday related that we'll be talking around like holiday time. Oh like, yeah. So once again, if you guys are more than welcome to um join us, join us if uh yeah. if you guys happen to 
want to if you guys would like to add us on our personal facebook to keep in touch that's cool with me yeah. i mean Absolutely. um yeah, cause, yeah all right well i sent you a message megan already and i sent one to mm-hmm. dan mm-hmm. ryan i don't know if you have one so uh you're more than welcome to add me and tessa you can follow us on instagram too it's not we're on there too <laughs> Yep, I'm I'm following you on Podbean. That was my start, I, but yeah, we, we'll yep. stay connected. Absolutely. Yeah, because I definitely would love to uh, talk about Like Dead because um, I really enjoyed that film as well. And Thanks. That's great. That. Speaking of which, uh, Dan, was that your first or second film? Because I was kind of that was like, my first. That was your first. Because you did have yeah, a short. Yeah, was Farmhouse. I can't. I haven't yeah, I been able to see Farmhouse down. yet, but uh, unfortunately, but um, I am planning on trying to find a damn copy of that somewhere. But I did notice one called. Mm-hmm. I think it was called uh, Diary of a Psychopath, right? Yes. Yes. Nope. There's a feature of that too. It's just it's not completed yet. Oh, okay. Um, it was released by uh by Crip TV, which is owned by Eli Roth. I love Crip as a TV. Ten, uh, like a ten minute um. Yeah, ten minutes short. So if you go to Crypt TV, you can usually find it. Otherwise, it's uh, you can find it at ForgeApollo.com. Okay. And there you go, guys and people listening. And if you if you want to, and now that you've heard from our fun writers, um, you can check out Ditch on Amazon uh prime for those it's a free download and if you just have amazon then um, you can rent it and it's just it's in the u.s it's titled ditch day um and we have an awesome website too yeah (laughs) filmditch.com so check us out and connect with us on instagram and facebook um yeah that's another question can you guys clarify this um i noticed Mm -hmm. ditch day and then there's ditch day massacre is it like like so what, is it both, or is it like... So it is both. So in the U.S. release, it is Ditch Day. That's how the distributor chose to release it. Okay. Um, and in um, the U.K., uh, Brazil, and Korea, it is Ditch Day Massacre. Okay. So it was it was from a, a marketing standpoint that they, they chose to drop the massacre for the U.S. market. Um, so it's just oh. Ditch Day. Okay. I, I think, would... Dan, when you originally wrote it, was it Ditch, Ditch Day Party? What was the first title you had? Yeah, originally, it was just titled Go Fuck Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. But very, I love it already. It's, um, it's very eye-catching. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah what, Ryan, it was, it was Ditch Catchy Party title. Massacre, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ditch, yeah, ditch we, Party we, Massacre? Ditch Party Massacre. And then, and then, just, and then like, just Ditch. ditch. Yeah, and then it was Ditch. It's had a lot of, you know... Marketing a film and 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 getting it out there and you know all those things, you know, there was a I think there's a little bit of the a little bit of a sensitivity to the word massacre in the U.S. right now. Uh, um, I know that in Germany that they they still kept the title massacre, but they had to re-edit the film to take some of the the horror out um, and violence because of their their codes. So uh, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Well, Australia no. just actually had to, uh, they actually banned, uh, going back to video games for a second, but they actually banned yeah. Outlast 2 from Australia because it was too um, sexual violence type stuff. Too yeah. much sexual violence, no, was... too much gore, yeah, too much blood. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was and too much. They, yeah. <laughs> and then, Your um, favorite scene, oh. Tessa, was edited out of the German version, just so you know. What? Yes, that 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 means what? Yeah. That I I died. Like, oh, that is uncalled for. <laughs> that is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sister. So, how dare they? Hey. Not to worry. The American version has everything. <laughs> yes. So we can take it. We can hack it. We we got the stomach for it. So so, so uh, for people uh, overseas, hey, what you need to do hey. is get yourself a U.S. copy. <laughs> wink wink. Um. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anybody else have anything to add, real quick, before we call it? I have to go I to the bathroom. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, on that note, I think we've all um, exhausted ourselves from one this. One or two. One or two. Yes. Paul, Tess, you guys are both freaking yeah. awesome. Well, Thank you guys are you. awesome as well. You guys so. are amazing. Thank you so much for being on our podcast. Yeah, because, I mean. Fun. Thank you for having us. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you, guys. And uh, it was like. Me and Tessa, went, uh, I actually talked to Tessa first, and I was just like, I don't know, what do you think? Should we uh, message this day and uh, throw a swing at a episode for one day? And then we kind of got to the talk about, uh, well, maybe we could do this as a season premiere, which would be awesome and rad. So you guys are going to be the season premiere of season two for our podcast. Nice. Yes. Well, we're we really an honor. Well, it is an honor because we made sure that you guys were the first ones, even though we had ideas come up. But we're just like, nope, we're gonna. Yeah, wait. we just we decided on definitely going with you guys for our uh, season season two premiere. Yeah, Ooh, we appreciate I, I, that. We're humbled. That, we Very appreciate, cool. Yeah, I, I'm glad I didn't know that beforehand because then I would have felt a whole bunch of pressure. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like yeah, we just want good. yeah, we just wanted you guys to you know come into this natural and everything, no added pressure, you know. Yeah. yeah. Just be yourselves, cause that's what we do. Yeah, and what I do too, because um, we actually. I'm usually make... asked to leave when I act like myself. Oh, dude. Oh dude. no, no, it's if celebrated you here. To leave, you need to like <laughs> call me up and tell me who this person is, and I'll come confront him with you. <laughs> Yeah, bring the axe. I will bring the axe. I will bring the axe. Bring the fireman axe. axe. <laughs> oh, you have the axe. Yeah, it actually has it. Oh, it yeah, has Josh the axe. is here. Uh, that is amazing. One, I think there was three or four of them, but I got they they let me have one as my, as oh. my token of, or their token of whatever. Very but nice. They're they're, they're an awesome couple, and dude, their work is freaking amazing. Who? If you check who? out their IMDb page, their their uh their credits. You'll be like, holy shit! These guys have done yeah. some pretty awesome stuff. Who the uh, studio or company? It's Josh and Sierra Russell, and then they were on yeah. that TV show. Well, what is it called? The reality TV show about the horror, the horror effects makeup. Oh, oh frick, why, why can't I think of the name of it? Face Off. Oh, Face Off. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. also a very good show. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah they were on that. They're just hardcore. super talented. I think they worked on uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Oh, God. And they've done, like, tons of other smaller horror movies that you have heard of. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't, um, I don't look at Rob Zombie's Halloween film. <laughs> yeah. I'm with well, you, Paul. Oh, my God. There's mixed opinions. Yeah. He's a sick and twisted person, and, and I, I've seen all of his movies. Did you check out 31? I have not No, yet. we haven't seen it yet. I, I keep. Have. And would you recommend it or what? I do. I actually do recommend it. It's very, very disgusting. Very awesome. A little awesome. different than you would uh, you would expect. Well, that's interesting. But Especially yeah, it, it depends. On, I mean, even it just takes everything that would disturb and upset you and just rapes it. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. But yeah. yeah. So I mean, if you're a sick fuck and you like Rob Zombie, you'll like the movie. <laughs> well, it's how definitely so? got got a pinpoint audience. Very I nice. I like it better Happy than Easter. Salem. Well, how, Lords of Salem. Uh, we actually have that. We just haven't watched Lords of Salem yet. But uh, what was I gonna say real quick? House of a Thousand Corpses just turned 14 years old the other day. And that wow. movie is freaking awesome. Love it. Love it. And yeah, I agree. Yeah, Doctor oh, Satan. Dude. Yeah, I like that one. Rejects. Have been, if the Academy Awards, I would have picked Devil's Rejects to win Best Picture that year. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Just saying. Right. But, uh. Captain yeah. Spalding. <laughs> oh, God. There was actually a married couple that had the guy playing Captain Spalding to dress up as Captain Spalding to do the wedding for them. Or the, uh. Really? Sid, yeah. Sid Hag. Yeah, yeah, there's like a, uh, article right. about it somewhere on the internet you could probably find it but yeah on that note if if i get remarried i'm gonna i'm gonna hire peewee herman oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. make sure he brings it make sure he brings his white shoes oh god and a bottle of luverderm <laughs> oh, oh, <my> <laughs> amazing 
But all right, guys. Um, <laughs> once again, it's been fun. It was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And and uh, thank you, I hope the uh, voices in your head have been quiet enough to do this too. Um, thank you, Megan, Ryan, and Dan for yeah. joining us. And yeah, thank you, Megan and Ryan. So you guys are awesome. Thank yes. you for being my a friend. I'll travel down the road and back again. <laughs> you're, you're a pal and a confidant. Just remember, so we, got your, we got your back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to St. Olaf now. All right. <laughs> All right, go for it. All right, take care, everyone. Take care. Take right. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.